Samuel Wasman Hazel is our Black History feature for this evening. Member of Parliament for the U.S. Party poses questions about the steering committee. And Minister of Tayat in the hot seat at the continuation of the Central Committee meeting of Parliament. Those are the headlines for Thursday, February the 25th, 2021. Good evening, viewers. This is SXM Daily News, and I'm Valerie from Clinton. I want to thank you so much for joining me this evening. And as usual, we have a full newscast for you, so let's get started. In our first story, the Central Committee meeting, which was adjourned on February the 15th, 2021, was reconvened on Wednesday at the House of Parliament. The Minister of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Transport and Telecommunication, the Honorable Ludmila de Weaver, was not only in attendance, but was in the hot seat as it took the Honorable Minister two hours to answer the barrage of questions about the reconstruction project at the Princess Juliana International Airport Terminal Building and operational projections for 2021, as well as the structural composition of the company's hierarchy and the reasons for the various supervisory boards and the protection of assets of the country by removing the assets presently at PJIAE and place them correctly at PJIH. The meeting was requested by MPs C.A. Bunkamper, G.S. Heiliger-Martin, R. Bryson, A.E. Arundel, and independent MP C.T. Emanuel. The Minister of Tayat started out the meeting by fielding questions posed to her by Member of Parliament, the Honorable Claudius Bunkamper. Questions from MP Bunkamper. Who was handling the bidding locally in June and July of 2020? All the bids during that period were handled by PJIAE. Why the delay in the ongoing bidding? The delay in the ongoing bidding for the terminal building works is due to the change in the bidding process because of COVID-19 and the time needed for responding to questions from bidders and subsequent issuance of amendments. Bidders need time to incorporate responses in the preparation of their bids. This will allow us to safeguard the integrity of the process as well. Did the design of the terminal building change? Does it justify the change in price? On level two of the building, additional space is designed for the extension of airline offices and the, extension, the expansion of the business class lounge. On level one, at the boarding and deplaning gates, escalators to the immigration area have been added to increase passenger flow capacity. On level zero, the entrance doors have been redesigned into hurricane-proof double sliding doors. A self-service backdrop system that has been added as part of the check-in process and an elevator that has been added into the check-in area for access to level one and two. On level zero, sorry, cost estimate was not based on the detailed design, which has since been updated, in addition to the price indexation as mentioned before. The concession that the government gave to the airport for the exploitation of the airport is valid until when exactly? The concession agreement is valid until 2030. Is the government allowed to adjust the concession at any point during the existing duration period? Any changes in the concession should be discussed with the bondholders. Is the government or, mem or maybe the airport management busy negotiating to have said concession managed by the SRIPO group moving forward? Uh, the answer is emphatically no. There are no discussions with SRIPO group to manage the concession. What does this mean for the upper management? So there's two questions which if we had actually answered in, in the affirmative would have led to an additional question regarding why it is being done and what does it mean for upper management and employee agreements. Uh, considering that the, it is, the negotiations are not going on to, for its people to manage, the, to manage the concession, that is not applicable. Is it also fair to state that the Royal Schiphol Group is negotiating the takeover of the bondholders' loan? If so, is there any particular reason for this move at this point in time? No, there is no discussion of the bondholders 
with Hippo. Is there presently an ongoing negotiation between PGIAH, PGIAE, Schiphol, and the state of the Netherlands to renew the cooperation agreement? <clears throat> if yes, can we get a copy of what's being negotiated, seeing all the interference concerns of the World Bank, the steering committee, BZK, and the Dutch government? The intention of the cooperation agreement between parties is to continue until the completion of the reconstruction project. Uh, the original expiration date is the summer of 2021, <clears throat> and that is currently up for discussion. And still on the topic of the bidding of contracts, the minister elucidated on the questions of, is the representative of the steering committee representing the Dutch government not one of the big players in the discrimination affair? And if so, why is he allowed to be in such a trustworthy position when his track record speaks for itself? The minister also responded to other questions regarding the corporate governance law and other questions. She responded further. Is the representative on the steering committee representing the Dutch government not one of the big players in the discrimination affair? And if so, why is he allowed to be in such a trustworthy position when his track record speaks for itself? The steering committee is made up of one person that was selected by St. Martin government, one that was selected by the Netherlands, and one by the World Bank. Why are so many entities not from St. Martin suddenly so interested in the corporate governance law revision while the airport dismissal saga is going on? One of the conditions set forth to receive funding from the World Bank and EIB was to upgrade corporate governance with respect to the PGIA companies. A corporate governance task force was put together to accomplish this goal, and any changes to the agreements has to be approved by COM and ultimately Parliament. Is management informing the workers that the airport does not have any funds to pay retroactive vacation or bonuses or any funds to the workers that is owed to them presently? PGIAE has made a settlement agreement with the help of the mediator for the outstanding retroactive vacation slash bonuses and indexations outstanding before 2020. This was signed by the unions and paid out in July 2020. Management informed the workers that there are no outstanding amounts except for the unsettled COLA compensation, the cost of living compensation. What is the delay in the reconstruction process as of today? The project was originally planned to start in 2018. Due to the lack of funding and non-release of the insurance proceeds, the timeline of the project was adjusted until such became available. Again, that was in April 2020. Why has the reconstruction timeline moved as much and as many times as it has? And why does it continue to move? It moved from January 12th to February 9th and now to an undetermined date in March. This is what I read on the PGIA website, or is that incorrect? The second extension is due to the time needed for responding to bidders' questions and subsequent issuance of amendments. These extensions are needed to safeguard the integrity of the bidding process and reduce the possibility of receiving claims from bidders afterwards. What behavior can we expect from the future of the project based on this very unstable timeline? PGIAE is still focusing on being fully operational in the first quarter of 2023. And um, a reiteration that the bidding process could not start until the funding was in place, which was only made available in April 2020. Is it true that construction award will now only begin June 2021, the start of our hurricane season? Will mobilization now be August slash September? And if yes, when will actual construction truly start? There are three parts to the project. The contract award is scheduled to take place in May 2021. The mobilization takes approximately four to six weeks, after which construction can start. Who screens the RSG, uh, RSG being in Royal Schiphol Group, representatives and specialized contractors paid for by PGIAE. All management and board members are screened by VDSM. All contractors follow PGIAE security procedures. 
Who's screening the project team? Who's checking the checker? The managing board is responsible for the governance of the project team. Was any consideration given to changes in the design? Changes in the design were reviewed with various departments, including security, operations, IT, commercial, rescue, and firefighters, electrical maintenance department, facilities maintenance department, as well as other stakeholders. Are there any confidential agreements between PGIAE, PGIAH, BZK, and Schiphol? If yes, why isn't the World Bank part of these as a lender and the EIB? Because they are lenders too, and the bondholders are lenders too, so is the BZK representing all money lenders. Most agreements have a confidentiality clause which requires all parties to agree prior to disclosing the contents such as the cooperation agreement signed between PGIAE, PGIAH, Schiphol, Netherlands, BV, and State of the Netherlands. World Bank, EIB, and the bondholders have their own responsibilities and are not represented by BZK. And on the topic of finding a counterpart for the CEO as per signed agreement with the RSG, the minister was asked why is someone like Mikhail Lake being bypassed by the present CEO when it is clear that Ms. Lake has more experience than the present CEO when it comes to the running of the airport. The minister answered that question and others as well. I truly need someone to explain to me how someone like Ms. Mikhail Lake is just being bypassed by the present CEO when Ms. Lake clearly has much more experience than the present CEO when it comes to the running of the airport. Ms. Lake has 14 years under her belt and is the present director of finance at PGIAE. It's a shame what's happening to one of our own by one of our own. The response received was that due to privacy reasons, no comment can be given on individual cases. However, the recruitment for the CFO counterpart is still in process. It has not been finalized as yet. How much longer will it be before PGIAE could not possibly be able to pay its monthly obligations? With the base case scenario, PGIAE can pay the monthly obligations going forward. How much money has PGIAE already utilized from the USD 72 million insurance proceeds? Approximate amount utilized to date is about 75% and those pr the insurance proceeds were used for the following. The construction of temporary facilities and the roof, the repayment of the bridge loan, legal and financing costs, terminal reconstruction costs such as design, mold remediation, and operating expenses. PGIAE went through a crisis in 2019 and as such required an urgent bridge loan from the government for an amount of USD 20 million to keep it afloat until the insurance proceeds came in. Are we seeing a repeat of this whereby PGIAE may need to borrow another USD 20 million in order to meet its monthly obligations? PGIAE insurance proceeds were not released until April 2020. This is why they required the bridge loan from government prior to that date. <clears throat> the going concern of the company is no longer the case since the release of the funds. Meanwhile, Member of Parliament for the U.S. Party, the Honorable Claudius Van Camper, posed a question to the Minister about the airport projects and the steering committee. If the representative on the steering committee representing the Dutch government was not one of the big players in the discrimination affair or the two slashing affair, and why is he allowed to sit in such a trustworthy position as the steering committee, seeing that the people that are being represented for the projects are not the common man he's accustomed to. The answer was the Dutch appointed him. That doesn't mean that he is not a racist, and that doesn't mean that he is a serious stumbling block for us in the projects. I know many people are afraid to use certain words, but I think it's time we start using them so people understand what we are truly up against in this country. 
Mr. Chairman, there was a question asked regarding the reconstruction timeline, and it was stated that time was needed for safeguarding of the bidding process. Mr. Chairman, the bidding process started many years ago. It didn't start yesterday. It started many years ago. How long are we going to continue safeguarding the bidding process until we get the one that we want to bid? When? Is that the reason, Mr. Chairman, why the bidding committee's names are confidential? In a public tender? A public tender for the country, St. Martin, with monies of St. Martin? I've never heard such ludicrousy in my life. But maybe we have a new set of rules that we haven't seen in Parliament yet <coughs> when it comes to these type of projects, Mr. Chairman. But maybe the minister can clarify that for me, if possible. Mr. Chairman, I'm a little confused with the answer given to me. When is the true construction, when, when will the award, the construction award, truly start? Is it now June 2021, as I read, I believe, in the Herald, or is July I read in the Herald? The contract award is being awarded in May 2021. Mobilization is four to six weeks, and then construction starts. So if, if I do this, that means construction starts mid-July. I just want to confirm if this is what it is, what it means. Because that last piece, no date was placed on. And if I do six weeks, that means it puts me in mid-July. I just want to be sure that mid-July, the construction really starts at the airport. And still to come, independent member of parliament wants to know how is it that the highest body in the land cannot get answers from a government-owned company. And I'll have the details of that story and more when SXM Daily News returns. Hi, I'm Switch. And I'm Save. And together we're here to tell you about WIB Switch, Switch and, and Save Mortgage Offer. Now at WIB, you can save and benefit from great specials when you decide to bring your mortgage to WIB. When you switch, WIB will offer you payment of penalty fees up to three months interest, payment of notary fees, waive of bank closing fees, and also the lowest interest rate. Plus, you'll have the chance to win back one year of interest payment. Visit any of WIB's mortgage specialists and benefit from WIB's Switch and hey, 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 that's my part. <clears throat> and save mortgage offer. Wib, your partner in progress. Welcome back, viewers. You're watching SXM Daily News, and I'm Valerie from Putin. And as we continue now, still at the parliamentary meeting yesterday, independent member of parliament uh, MP Christophe Emmanuel spoke about posing questions but receiving no answers from the minister of Tayat. The independent member of parliament wanted to know how is it that the highest body cannot get answers from a government-owned company because everything is confidential. Mr. Chairman, if we are going to go down the road that everything is confidential, when they don't want to answer a question, Mr. Chairman, then it makes no sense we have this meeting. Because everything is confidential, 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 confidential. I'm trying to figure out how it is that the highest body in this country can't get answers from a government-owned company because everything is confidential. Mr. Chairman, I want to start off with the first question that I've been asking almost a year ago because, Mr. Chairman, the minister is briefed on it and she did not answer the question, actually danced around the question. Mr. Chairman, I want to read the agreement again from Skippel. I want to read it, Mr. Chairman. It is hereby agreed as follows. Skipper shall provide the services on the instruction of and for the benefit of PJIAE. The services shall further ag agreed between the parties and the state of the Netherlands, but shall include the following projects. Operational review of the present restructured terminal building. More specifically, to advise on overall security and safety, capacity and flow during peak times, outdoor flow, vehicle and traffic and taxi traffic, roadside, 
overall review of departing and arriving passengers, day management of the terminal building, and general remarks. Operational review of key functionality of PJIAE, more specifically to advise where PJIAE needs further support and whether PJIAE has all checks and balances in place. Mr. Chairman, I ask the question since last year in April, how is it that Skipple can appoint a CFO and still advise the same company PJIAE on those matters if it's not a conflict of interest. And SXM Daily News will have more of the Parliament's heated debate in tomorrow's broadcast. And as we continue to honor our local heroes for Black History Month, this evening we will pay tribute to Samuel Watsman Hazel. The text was taken from Kenneth Cook's book, The Politicians Who Made a Difference. Samuel Wasman Hazel, the son of Melford Hazel and Louisa York, was born on December the 19th, 1934, on St. Martin. Although reserved in nature, he began a political career in 1959 on the NVP list and served as a commissioner for 14 years. During the 1960s, Sam Hazel took a break in politics and focused on helping his father run the family business. But by 1971, he was back in the political arena, contesting the parliamentary elections. He received 85 votes in that year. Consequently, Sam Hazel was appointed to the Island Council in 1971 and remained there until 1987. During those years, he helped push for the establishment of a full-fledged tax inspectorate on St. Martin. In the August 28, 1981 issue of the New Age newspaper, Sam Hazel was quoted as saying that the financial problems of the government can be solved if a proper tax inspectorate was established. Along with the other members of the Executive Council, Sam Hazel aided in the extension of the Princess Juliana International Airport back in 1973. He also laid the groundwork for the establishment of the John Cooper and Jose Lake Senior Ballpark on the Elby Scott Road. He also tried to institute a new purchasing system for supplies for government and attempted to revamp the Education Department. Sam Hazel's other contributions were seen in his fight for a solution to the Mullet Bay Crisis of 1981. In Jose Lake Jr.'s book, Friendly Anger, he said that management of the Mullet Bay Hotel claimed that it had lost $2.5 million, forcing it to file for bankruptcy. But Sam Hazel, as then Commissioner of Tourism, wanted the 400 owners of the hotel's 700 condominiums to buy out the hotel's parent company, Island Gem. For such a deal to occur, permission was needed from Chase Manhattan Bank, which held the mortgage on the Mullet Bay Hotel. In the end, according to Joe Lake, the hotel reopened after the Parliament of the Antilles consented to pay off the hotel's loan. This was only possible through the efforts of Sam Hazel and other Island Council members. Sam Hazel became an independent member of the Island Council after he was voted out of the ruling DP party in 1985. He then formed the Independent Citizens Movement, ICM, and with the SPM, contested the Island Council elections of 1987. He received 219 votes. A year later, on the Voice of St. Martin's program aired on PJD2, Sam Hazel called for St. Martin to seek separate status. Interestingly enough, that same year, Claude Watty announced that St. Martin should seek independence. During the remainder of the 1980s and the 1990s, Sam Hazel managed the Seaview Hotel as well as the Leeward Broadcasting Corporation, LBC television station. Both businesses were on Front Street. In the 2007 Island Council elections, he and Harold Jack joined forces as the Spiritual People's Party and he secured six votes. Samuel Wasserman Hazel died on April the 13th, 2019, at the age of 84. And as we continue now with the local COVID-19 update, as of February the 24th, there were three persons who tested positive for COVID-19. 
However, 10 persons have recovered, bringing the total active cases to 40. The total number of confirmed cases is now 2,050. The Collective Prevention Services, CPS, are monitoring 39 people in home isolation. One patient remains hospitalized at the St. Martin Medical Center, and the total number of deaths due to COVID-19 remains at 27. The number of people recovered since the first case surfaced on St. Martin has increased to 1,983 people. 99 people are in quarantine based on contact tracing investigations carried out by CPS. The Ministry of Public Health, Social Development and Labor, VSA, the airport health team in collaboration with the Healthcare Laboratory St. Martin, HCLS, have tested 2,499 travelers arriving at the Princess Juliana International Airport, while CPS has tested 19,228 people throughout the community. As the numbers continue to fluctuate, CPS will continue to actively execute its contact tracing measures. Minister of Health, the Honorable Richard Panafleck, is urging everyone to remain vigilant when in public places. For your own safety, please continue to wear a mask, practice two meters social distancing, sanitize and wash your hands frequently, and please be cautious of large gatherings. Now turning to our weather forecast of February the 25th, 2021, a relatively dry and stable atmosphere will continue to restrict precipitation across the region. The Atlantic high pressure system will maintain brisk winds and hazardous seas. Seas are expected to peak at nine feet. Therefore, the small craft advisory remains in effect for St. Martin. Small craft operators and sea bathers should continue exercising caution. So the outlook through Saturday midday, partly cloudy and breezy with a few passing showers. Now let's turn to your three-day forecast. And still to come, Member of Parliament Omar Otley briefly addresses his court case. And I'll have the details of that story when SXM Daily News returns. The innovative Banco Medico contactless smart card. Your Banco Medico smart card is now equipped with a contactless feature for payments. So get ready to tap and go. Contactless payments are fast, easy, secure, and accepted worldwide at all Maestro enabled contactless terminals. Tap for transactions equivalent to or less than 100 NAV or the US dollar equivalent. You will receive notifications via email anytime you tap. Tap, tap, and pay fast, fast with WIB. For more information, visit our website at wib-bank.net. Tap and go with your partner in progress. Welcome back, viewers. And as we end this edition of SXM Daily News for this evening, Member of Parliament for the UP Party, the Honorable Omar Otley, while at the parliamentary meeting yesterday, made a notification and the Member of Parliament took that opportunity to address his court case and being redeemed. I would just like to let the public at large know that yesterday I received some grateful news that the prosecution team decided to drop the case and end all investigations against my person. This has been a fight for 11 months and um, during the course I have remained quiet, I have fought, silently and I knew that this day would come. So just as I was implicated publicly, I would like everyone to know that um, I am now redeemed publicly. And with that viewers, it brings us to the end of this edition of SXM Daily News for this evening. I am Valerie Van Putten, thanking you so much for joining me this evening. And just a reminder that this and other programs are available online. Simply log on to stmartinmediacenter.com for viewing. And on behalf of the SXM Daily News team, we thank you so much for watching and plan on meeting you right back here again tomorrow. <music>